If you will notice on YouTube, my subscriber count is 190k. It is not telling me the last three digits. And why do you think this is happening? Well, I have a story to tell you. Let me explain you why YouTube hides that. On the start of day, it was 187344. Then it became 187200. And then it became 187500 in just three hours. Well, what does this mean? Are people unsubscribing and subscribing to my account? Not really. This is a problem of distributed databases. What essentially is happening is I performed these three reads and all the reads were redirected to different replicas. The first replica showed the subscriber count to be 187344. When I performed the second read operation, I got redirected to a different replica which was having a subscriber count a little stale, maybe a two day old value which was 187200. Then the third read was redirected to a newer replica which was having the latest information and that's why I was able to see 187500. These are the basic problems that come with distributed databases and in this particular video we will be diving deep into the problems that come with the replication lag in distributed databases. I hope you enjoy this video in our system design from scratch series and make sure to watch the previous videos. The link is in the description. This video is being sponsored by educative.io which has a collection of well-written crafted courses for software developers from Python to front-end to system design to scalability to Docker and whatnot. Learning at Educative is really powerful because they have all coding workspaces in the browser itself and also they offer Educative for Limited in which you pay only once for all the courses. They have annual and monthly plans and my audience gets a 10% additional discount on the 40% campaign they have for India. So you get a 46% discount on using the coupon Rachid and you can have the link in the description below. The idea of distributed databases is primarily having same data in multiple locations across geographies so that you can perform reads faster. Now to have this replication happening, it introduces some replication lag in our distributed database. Now what are the things which can go wrong in such systems? Let's try to understand that. The first thing which can go wrong is when you are performing a write on the database but because you are reading from some replica which is stale, you feel that your write has not been performed. This can be problematic in scenarios in which you are commenting on some post and when you are reading the comments on that post, you cannot see your comment because it was not yet replicated to the replica. This might give the user an idea that their comment was not actually saved. So they might comment again. And now they end up with two comments which are duplicate. There are many other scenarios which you can imagine in which this can go wrong. To fix such scenarios, we can implement a strategy which is known as read your own rights, which is RYOW. So talking about our comment scenario in which user is commenting on something and then getting the idea that their comment was lost, it would mean that you are fetching all the comments from some replica, but you're also fetching your own rights. So every user will fetch their own rights so that they get the momentary confirmation that their right is replicated and it's in perfect sync. So you're kind of black boxing it from the user who is actually performing the right. They will see that their post is live their comment is live. However, it might take some time to let that write be reflected in all other readers. But since the writer is having the acknowledgement and a visible confirmation that their write is stored, they won't make this mistake of writing the same comment or post twice. So now how would the strategy of RYOW fit in our implementation? You can say that for certain APIs, we will always fetch those from the leader. This will ensure that the latest rights are always reflected, not just for the current user, but for all the users. But this might not be scalable. For example, user profile is something that the user might edit themselves. So you can say that user profile is something that we should fetch from the leader. But it's quite tough to maintain this mapping about which APIs should be redirected to leaders and which should be redirected to replicas. So this is not really that scalable way of handling the strategy. An alternative strategy for this would be 
for one minute of the write, you keep redirecting all the reads to the leader. And assuming that in one minute, all the replicas are in sync, now you can do the reads from other replicas. The last strategy that I also want to discuss over here is the client themselves can remember the time of their last write. And now you can redirect all the reads to the followers that reflect all the changes till that time. So let's say you are performing a write at some T1 timestamp. And for every replica, you know the latest timestamp till which they have processed the updates. So you can pick a replica which has the latest update timestamp value greater than T1. However, this is easier said than done. In reality, think of it in this way. You have a user which is using LinkedIn, for example, from their laptop as well as mobile. Now, if they are posting a post to LinkedIn from their laptop and you are storing that timestamp information on the laptop, the, that value will not be available in the local state of your mobile application. So you need some centralized metadata to actually combine and understand what is the latest timestamp of the last write and then make a choice to select the valid replica which is having a latest timestamp value greater than that. So why do these number of followers are increasing and decreasing with time? Let's say on my YouTube channel, I'm having 185723 subscribers. And then after an hour, I see that it has dropped to 185100. So this might give me very bad impression that I have done something terribly wrong and it has led to a decrement in my subscriber count and 600 subscriber decrease in just one hour. It might give me a very bad impression that probably my video or last video was really bad. But after 30 minutes, I'm redirected to some fresh replica and my final subscriber count is 185780. In reality, the last video that I had uploaded might have helped me increase my subscriber count. But for a short duration of time, when I was being redirected to a stale replica, I was getting all these nervous vibes and it's a really bad experience for user. Obviously, this can be a bit exaggerated example, but I just want you to understand that in distributed databases, such scenarios do happen in which the user is always being redirected back and forth to different replicas in their read queries. And at different points of time, they're moving back and forth in terms of the staleness. This is a classic problem of monotonic reads in which several reads are performed by the user and we must ensure that they won't go back in time. You should always redirect them to either the same replica or to some replica which is always moving forward with time. You don't want them to redirect to a replica which is stale from some replica which was given earlier to them. A very easy solution is to redirect the user to the same replica based on user hash. This way, it will be ensured that all the reads performed by user will never go back in time as the replica will continue to get updated. It will never go back since the replica will never go back in time. Therefore, the user will also never go back in time. The only problem in this approach is what if that replica goes down? Now it's your job to pick a replica which is actually having the latest updates from the last replica that user was being redirected to. I hope this is making this journey of distributed data systems very enjoyable and interesting. It does come with a lot of challenges and I hope we are able to understand the challenges as well as the solutions for them. Let's move to the other problem, which is seeing the future problem. In this particular problem, there is a user A having a conversation with user B. There is obviously a web server in between which is handling that communications via web sockets. And the user A says, what is the ETA? And the user B says, coming in 15 minutes. From the point of conversation, user A is having a fantastic experience as well as user B. But let's say there is a group chat which is going on and user C is seeing this in a very different experience. Let me explain. So let's say user A is in different geography as compared to user B. Therefore, their leader is in partition 1 and the user B's leader is in partition 2. Now, since these are two different leaders, they will have different followers and there is replication happening between the partition 1 leader with this follower and partition 2 leader with this follower. Now, from the user C perspective, this is their timeline and it might happen that the user B message, which is coming in 15 minutes, may get synced to this follower before 
this what's ETA message gets synced to this follower. So as you can see, this T1 can happen before T2. And from the user C perspective, this is what they are seeing. Before T1, they see an empty chat. But between T1 and T2, they are seeing the reply of user B before the message of A received. And after T2, everything is working fine because you can see that there would be some timestamp which is associated. So you can sort in your application based on timestamp. And now you can see the correct order that there was a question which A had asked and B had just replied to it. But for this brief duration of between T1 and T2, you are actually seeing this in your screen, which is coming in 15 minutes. How did B see the future is something which you can question here. This is what we call as consistent prefix trees. And this is a problem which comes with partitioning, which we will understand in the future videos of our system design series. Consistent prefix reads dictate that all the writes which are being happening in some sequential order, that order must not be broken when you're doing the reads. I hope you enjoyed this video of the replication lag and the problems which come with rep distributed data of all modern apps due to the huge load of users and the activities which are going on behind the scenes they must succumb to using distributed databases, which is a good thing. It provides the scalability and availability. But as application developers, we should be aware about the caveats, which are generally hidden. And I hope this video did justice in making these concepts clear. In the next video, we will try to understand the other architectures of replication, which are multi-leader and leaderless. All right, I hope you found this video informative. And if that's the case, Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss further updates from my side. Thanks for watching and as always, happy coding. Bye-bye.